Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Hello, hello. Today's episode is a solo one. I got in a couple of messages from friends and listeners wondering a little bit more about my story and I thought this would be a nice opportunity to share. It's unscripted. I have no idea what's going to come out. I trust that whatever comes out at the moment will be relevant, whatever that you need. If you're watching the video, you might notice that I'm under a blanket. I posted a a few images on social media of how I record my intros and it's usually under a blanket because my apartment is pretty echoey and no matter what I do I sound like I'm kind of in a tin can even when I'm outside the blanket so maybe I'll start a series under the blanket reflection monologue musings with Jess so a little bit about myself I was born and raised in Lima Peru We moved around a lot because things were pretty chaotic during the time that I was born. Terrorism was really bad there. My family eventually settled here in Canada for a couple of years. And then we moved back to Peru because my my dad, my mom, they really liked it. They had their life there, so they moved back. But when we went back to Peru, I knew it was temporary because I would come here for university so it always felt like I was a visitor wherever I went to and I guess I learned to belong to myself to be independent because I was always like an outsider per se and Maybe that's why I became a wallflower, quiet, observant, just understanding my surrounding at first. So I came to Canada eventually for university, if you're still with me, if you haven't gotten lost with my train of thought. I will do my best to stay on point. I came to Canada for university. I really wanted to changed the world if that makes any sense as a kid i saw a lot of poverty around me a lot of children working to survive to make ends meet while i was very fortunate to have a roof on top of my head didn't have to worry about finances my parents were taking care of me so i grew up with the awareness that i had a lot more than other people and I felt this innate need to give back to do something about it I guess maybe it's the Enneagram in me um, type 2 helper just part of who I am I wanted to help so I thought advertising would be the best way to help which is kind of funny of all things there was this campaign I saw in Peru towards the end of my high school years that was when I was deciding what to do for university and I had no idea what I wanted to do and to be honest I really wasn't good in any particular subject looking back I realized I wasn't made for school and I think not a lot of us are in the way that it's structured where you just sit and learn from being what you're told at 
I wasn't good at math. I wasn't good at history or memorizing or science. I couldn't, I love learning about those things, but I wasn't good at communicating. And math, oh gosh, <laughs> the Asian gene in me is non-existent. My mom is really great at math, but um, it never quite landed for me. I think years later, I realized I was, um, it's not dyslexic, dyscalculia or something like that, where you're not good with numbers. So why advertising? I saw this campaign and it was very, very similar to the one that was going on in the States. I think it's called Live Strong, the Live Strong bracelets, the yellow plastic ones. They used the same concept in Peru where a bunch of celebrities were posing as the three wise monkeys um, with their eyes covered, ears and mouth. And the concept of that piece was that you can pretend you're not seeing anything or you cannot say anything. It doesn't mean that the problems are not there and they were addressing childhood poverty. So it really moved me because I saw thousands of people buying those bracelets. It became a fashion statement. It became a cool thing to have. And they were also supporting a cause. And I, I know a lot of them either didn't care about the cause or they're like, cool, the helping kids in Peru have breakfast. That's amazing. But they were more into the mindset of, oh, this looks cool, I want to be a part of it. And I realized how powerful advertising is because it can help people connect to causes. It can drive masses when used in the proper way. So that was my whole spiel of wanting to get into advertising. I knew that advertising wasn't something that I would do forever, but I also didn't know what the next steps were. So I'm hoping that this episode is going to share a little bit more about me coming home to myself and tuning into my inner voice. So let me paint you a picture. In the middle of my career, I was pretty, I was doing pretty well. I got the salary I wanted. I was climbing that corporate ladder, as they say, but I felt so out of place. And it was so daunting to realize that all the hours, all my years of education that I spent in this is not something that I want. That the job I worked so hard and was pretty proud at wasn't good for me. And some of the clear signs I got was I got sick a lot. I burn out often. I was more burnt out than I was healthy if that makes sense. Like out of the 365 days of the year, I was probably sick for 200. There was always a sore throat, a cold, someone would get the flu and I would catch anything anyone at the office had because my immune system was that weak. I think that was kind of my, what nudged me to move because you know how we always get whispers. We know when something's not right for us. If you truly listen, you know when something's not right. And that can trigger a lot of fear, uncertainty, because what do you do when you spend so much of your life and your time pursuing something that at the end is not good for you? You have to deal with feelings of, for me at least, it was feelings of unworthiness, out of place, and then the now what? I definitely went through the now what because who am I? I had attached my worth to that job. I had worked so hard to fit into that thing, even though I wasn't, now looking back, I know I wasn't living my full potential, but I thought I was because, you know, I followed the plan. I checked all the boxes. I followed all the milestones. And things were working out. So why was I feeling this way? So I saved up, handed my resignation. I know it was time to tune inwards, listen to what my soul yearning was, what that inner voice was trying to tell me. Because I didn't know who I was. 
other than the overachiever who hit every deadline and checked all the boxes. And let's face it, also a total people pleaser. So when I walked away from that career, I broke up with the identity that defined me for the past 10 years. Um, yeah, I, I leaped from that corporate ladder. I've been attaching my work to my title earnings, seeking approval and validation through doing. My body was so fried from all that pushing. I had to relearn how to simply be. And trust me, even now, that's close to five years after, four years, I'm still learning because when you're in the hustle, when you're so used to pushing and doing, you don't just stop. You can't just stop. There's this anxiety that comes out of it because your body is so used to it. It thinks you're in danger if you're stopping, which is crazy because when you slow down, you are able to create so much more space. I was finally able to hear myself, what my soul ached for, what my body needed. And it doesn't mean that you'll get the answers right away. At least for me, once that I understood how much I had abused my body, my mind, and spirit, I knew that I had a lot of work to do to come home to myself. But at least I answered that call. Yes, I was, I was nudged out of it. I was pulled out of it because, you know, again, it starts as a whisper when you're when something's not working and either you respond to that call and say, hey, what are you trying to tell me? Or it something bigger is going to happen that will pull you out of that situation. Because I really believe we are meant to live in alignment. We're meant to live in a way that is sustaining for us that's enriching we were meant to live life and not let life wear us out but we buy into all these conditioning society's rules and expectations of what success is or even what what are the goals that you should have maybe it comes from Maybe it's been passed on from families. Maybe it's getting a degree because you're the first person to get a degree in your family. We get all these dreams and hopes that people pass down to us and for the best because they want the best for you. Because if I look back, I know that my parents, my grandparents' generation, they didn't have the luxury of walking away from a job necessarily. They didn't have the luxury of tuning inwards and see how their lives are doing, how they're feeling, because they were on survival mode. Immigrating to another country, trying to adapt, going through war and famine, those are pretty traumatic. And as I do more of my inner work, I realize how much of who I am and how I do things have been trauma that's been trickled down to me. Like the biggest one is my worth through doing. And I don't know if you can relate at all, but it's so scary to take that away. Like your title, everything you've worked hard for, and trying to define yourself outside of what you do. I try my best whenever I introduce myself or when I meet new people to not just ask about what they do, because we are so much more than what we do and accomplish. We are our passions, we are growing, moving energy. And the more I see, one thing that I really noticed when I was in the middle of advertising, even now that I'm out of it, I see people going through so much burnout, trying to either prove themselves or get the job done. Sometimes you're on survival mode and you can only get the job done because otherwise it piles on and it's never ending. And it's a lot of jobs and industries are so demanding and it really makes us 
lost ourselves. It, we can easily lose ourselves in these circumstances, especially because with technology, which I think it's a beautiful thing, it's not good or bad, but with technology, we're connected all the time. So now with a lot of jobs, we are able to do it anywhere at any time. So boundaries are being blurred and it's hard to disconnect. Because even when you disconnect from work, you might get an email from someone, you might get a message, um, or maybe your mind is still thinking about work. You can love your work and still not being able to keep that distance between you or separate. So after I quit my career and realized that I had burned out, it's taken my body a, a couple of years to recover. I've been to a naturopath, osteopath, chiropractor, um, to a lot of different healing modalities just so I can come back to myself, to my body, to know that I'm safe. And so much of that healing process, that self-discovery, because... I like to call it self-discovery because we're not just here to heal. We're not broken, even though there might be many moments where you feel lost and alone and isolated when you're in the middle of, of figuring things out. And allowing myself that compassion because... I would get the signs from my body that... I needed to get out that that wasn't good for me and I tried to push through and when I realized you know years later the damage that I had done I felt so much guilt and shame for allowing myself to be in that position for pushing so hard but now I'm able to look at it with a more compassionate lens my body was doing its best to keep me alive and to also give me a sign that I wasn't where I'm supposed to be and once you get all these messages it doesn't mean things are changing from one day to another like I said you don't go from going 100 miles an hour to completely stopping and slowing down a lot of things are going to come up a lot of triggers and blocks that we had and we weren't aware of so it's really important to create that space for yourself to digest and just be I think the, the theme for today other than my story is learning how to be to just listen and respond to what your body your mind your soul wants you don't have to have it all figured out I think there's a lot of pressure to map out things to plan things there's a lot of fear and uncertainty but if we're able to come back to the core of who we are and what makes us happy what makes you excited when you do things because i think we all have a purpose here whatever that purpose can be the purpose can be manifested in different forms and medium For me, I wanted to help people through advertising. That was the medium that made sense for me. That was the medium that I knew of through design and trying to help people communicate their friends and helping charity have a voice. That was the medium I knew until I started growing and learning about other ways. So the path is not always linear. But if you're able to follow that inkling at the start of figuring yourself out, you might be able to slowly come back into alignment. And alignment is always changing. How alignment looks for one person is different for the other person. And how alignment looked last year might be different this year. Alignment is listening to your inner compass and following that. Is today, you know, maybe today is time for you to work or you have a lot of energy. Maybe tomorrow 
you need a bit more rest and responding to that and not trying to push our bodies, our minds to do something that we want just for the sake of it. Because I think our minds are understand what fears or emotions come up, understand how you can move forward even though you might not have it all figured out. All you need to know is the next step for you and the next step could be something as simple as maybe I'll give myself a free hour every day to just be. It can start as simple as that. You don't need drastic measures when you're coming into alignment or when you're starting to tune your attention inwards again. It's very daunting and we want to have it all figured out and solve it, but it takes time and it, it is a process. It's a process of becoming and unbecoming basically. So I wanted to wrap today's episode up with some lessons that I've learned when I transitioned from my job. If you find yourself in a similar situation or anyone who's kind of in the middle of a pivot, just trying to figure themselves out, here are some lessons I have for you. First of all, one that we've talked about in this episode, change is uncomfortable, but it's necessary. If there's one constant in life, is change. Probably an irony, but things are always evolving and moving and we are always different. We're always learning and adapting. So for us to become who we want to be, who we're destined to be, there's no right or wrong. Just different ways to go at something. Every mishap comes with a lesson. Instead of saying, why me? Maybe we'll frame it as, why this? What am I holding on to? What are my true desires? The next one, if you're good in doing what you like, imagine how great you'll be at doing something you love. And like I shared earlier, we're great at convincing ourselves to play small, to stay somewhere that we might be good at even though it's not the best thing for us and we convince ourselves but we by doing that we're also denying ourselves the sense of fulfillment and not trusting that we are meant to do something that can be thrilling and fulfilling for us Sometimes we get stuck in our zone of excellence instead of our zone of genius. There's this po- uh, this book called The Big Leap that has been tremendous in helping me recognize my energy levels to the different tasks and my abilities. For instance, I I'm creative. I love designing, but I also know that It's not what lights me up. Sometimes if I do too much of it, it can drain me. So what lights you up? Try exploring. The next one is uh, you don't have to reinvent yourself. You don't have to wait to reinvent yourself. You don't have to wait until your late 40s, 50s, 60s. If you want to make a change, go for it. The moment you start feeling not aligned with your purpose, start by looking within and take small steps moving towards that direction of your desires. Like Simon Sinek says, fulfillment is not a privilege, it's a right. And again, you don't have to have it all figured out, but just respond. Acknowledge that feeling and take a tiny step towards that direction and see if that's where you want to go. Number four, it's not going to be easy, but it's not impossible. Whatever situation you're currently in, you're not stuck in it. You may feel like you are, but you aren't. And it's easier said than done, but if you're committing, if you're committed to living a more fulfilling life, only you will be able to make it happen. Start with small shifts. My path to living authentically has taken me a couple of years, and that's okay because... 
there are layers, layers of self-discovery, layers of healing, layers of exploration that you get to tap into it. And it's not about how long it'll take, it's the why you're doing it. Number five, get ready to work hard. And okay, work hard does not mean pushing yourself. It just means working smart, diving in, being open to exploring because it's going to be uncomfortable Be to look within, to come into a realization of where you're at and where you want to go. What are you setting out to do? What shifts can you add in your everyday to move towards that direction? And who can support you in your path because you are not meant to do it by yourself? Um, the next one, there will be a lot of noise from your loved ones, peers, and friends, and that's okay. They're all just trying to help. Everyone will try to offer a piece of advice. There is no right or wrong. Just what feels right for you and no one other than yourself will be able to recognize that. So how does one deal with all that noise? For me, it's been super helpful to meditate, journal, give myself space to even not think about it. And that's when my subconscious usually comes to a resolute. It's practice again. Just connect and, and trust. Number seven, expect detours. You rarely get from point A to point B without detours. We learn our most precious lessons in the most unexpected circumstances that life puts you in. So embrace it because this is where growth takes place. Number eight, you will feel lighter. The moment you start living authentically, when you start aligning your why with every aspect of your life, there is a sense of ease of comfort and inspiration. And it doesn't mean that's the state you will be all the time. You'll go, you know, you dip low and high. You go through the motions because we're human. We're meant, every emotion is here to signal something. There's no good or bad. You will also start attracting the right people. New opportunities that you never expected. And we've all heard of the law of attraction, and it's, it's to a degree where you will start meeting people who have similar values and passions to you. Um, the energy you're putting out there will definitely come back in ways that you probably don't expect it at all. And, you know, the final lesson is to make sure to take care of yourself. Either you're going through a career change, traveling the world, or checking off your bucket list. Um, the initial adrenaline will wear off and it's easy to fall back into old habits and lose motivation. To keep that momentum going or to realize your why, make sure you're making time to connect with yourself every day so you can anchor and really listen to that compass. And is that compass pointing towards another direction? That's okay because every single step is leading you somewhere. For me, morning journaling and night journaling has helped me tremendously. Like, not look at my phone and just write my thoughts out. It's helped me be more mindful and really make space for me to listen. And I wanted to share this quote from Eric Roth, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button Screenplay. For what it's worth, it's never too late, or in my case, too early to be whoever you want to be. There's no time limit. Stop whenever you want. You can change or stay the same. There are no rules to this thing. You can make the best or the worst of it. I hope you can make the best of it. And I hope you see things that startle you. I hope you feel things you never felt before. I hope you meet people with a different point of view. I hope you live a life you're proud of. If you find that you're not, I hope you have the courage to start all over again. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please let me know in the comments if this is something you would like to hear more of, or more interviews, or even more topics you would be interested. Thank you for listening.
Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.